Hi guys, welcome back to my project. The ongoing project is a camera share app. And this is the second video of the dream. I will show you how I designed UI using LVGL. Uh, this app lets you make your own camera share app. Uh, for example, if you need an incredibly long timer or if you need to take a picture with a certain uh, period of time, you can modify a few things to make it based on my project. Uh, also, it works on not only iPhone but also Android phones. AirVisual has enabled many different projects, and with the development of the mobile, you can see many useful touch-based projects. Uh, of course, it's still difficult to make it look as fancy as mobile, but it's getting better and better as it continues to develop. I think it can be a game changer, hopefully. Uh, anyway, let's start today's video. Uh, I will create a new project before I start working on the GUI. Unfortunately, the ESP IDF extension does not yet have the function to create a new project. Uh, I hope it will be added in the future version. Uh, please take a look at this carefully. This is a basic structure that the ESP IDF project should have. Uh, the CMake list text file is having the required information to build the project by CMake. Uh, so you should keep it. The SDK config file will be made by IDF many configs, so do not worry about that. Uh, it's having all information about your ESP32 will be available based on this. Uh, the component folder is for adding extra source code like plugins or libraries. Uh, each CMake list text file exists for each component and is required for building. Uh, there is a folder called the main. Uh, by default, the main.c file exists and is the starting point of the project. Uh, the build folder will have the final object files after building. You don't need to touch them. Uh, to create a new project, you can create a new folder and then create a CMake list text file on the project root folder, also the main C file under the main folder. But this is not what I want. I'd like to make it easier and simpler. Uh, here is a command line application called ESPY CLI to manage projects simply. Uh, first, download using the PIP. PIP3 always operates on the Python 3 environment only, uh, as PIP2 does with Python 2. Uh, PIP operates on whichever environment is appropriate to the context. After the install is done, just set it to the folder where ESPIDF is installed. Uh, that's it. Now we can create a new empty project for ESP IDF. The new one is instead of the hello world, it's camera timer BRA HID. Uh, it's created. Uh, let me open this project in the VS Code. Uh, if you look at the left project structure, you can see that only the files and folders that you really need are created. Uh, let's see if there are any problems with the project build. Uh, there is a one problem that you cannot find the path of the include header file. So we need to add the path to find them correctly. Uh, let me add the required contents to the C, C++ properties. This part is the same as the previous video. Just copy and paste it. Okay, the error is gone. Uh, let's build it. Uh, I want to see the hello world in the console. Um, a build successfully. Don't forget to select the port connected to ESP32 before uploading. After that, you can see the uh, setting JSON file is created. Uh, like C, C++ properties, it will update with my settings. Uh, it's ready. Uh, let's rock and roll. Uh, as we expected, there is a hello world in the console. Yay! Uh, this means the new development environment is working properly. Uh, actually, I always do this kind of test first when I start a new project because sometimes I can save lots of time. Uh, anyway, it's time to dive into LVGL. 
Do you remember to use LVGL example source code in the previous video? Uh, I'm gonna bring the components needed for the project. Uh, you can see the folder every port is literally to created in the last video. I will copy all the components from this folder and paste them into the camera timer BRHID folder I just created. Uh, you can see that the component folder has been added to the left of the VS Code screen. We no longer need the example source code, so let's delete it. Uh, also delete the example folder under the LVGL folder. We don't need it too. Uh, I have organized all the unnecessary parts. Uh, what the next is appending the component we will use in this project in the CMake this file. If you do not this, you won't see the LVGL option from the IDF menu config. Uh, I'm getting the CMake this file from the LVGL project and paste it. The path is the same because I copied the component folder as it is. Uh, now what you have to do is set up your display from the menu config. Uh, it's the same setting, so I will move on quickly. I just changed the screen from landscape to inverted portrait since my display is upside down. Uh, if you need a detailed explanation, I recommend you to watch the previous video. It's including all this part. All done. Let me build it and see if it works properly. Although the source code is empty, we confirmed it's related to code for LVGL right now. Uh, it's time to think about the UI we will draw. Uh, here is the Adobe XD. Adobe XD is a great tool for drawing UI. Also, it's a great conversation tool between developers and designers. As you can see on the screen, the design for our project is pretty simple. Uh, from top to bottom, uh, on the top, there is a one label widget to show the status. Uh, on the right, it's a drop-down list widget. Uh, it lets users select the time they want to delay. If none is selected, it just takes a picture without any delay. Uh, in the center, it has a right middle widget. It's including animation, so you will see the labels moving smoothly. As its child, it has a label widget to display text value. The last one is a bottom widget with a label widget. Uh, we need a label widget to display the text shot in the bottom. Uh, that's all. It's just a single page application. Let's go back to the VS Code. Um, copy and paste the main source code from the LVGL example source. Uh, the way LVGL works in ESP32 is basically described in one of my previous projects. Uh, especially the dynamic Wi-Fi configuration project would be very helpful to understand how it goes. I will try to remove all the unnecessary parts so that only hello world can appear on the screen. Um, to briefly explain this code, uh, run the GUI task in the app main. So LVGL graphics are drawn based on free RQS. You can see there is a semaphore handle defined. You can think about a couple of cases. Problems can occur if you send messages between processes or if you share certain data through a shared memory. Uh, to handle this problem, a semaphore was designed. Uh, the main difference between semaphore and mutex is the number of synchronization targets it manages. When mutex has only one synchronization target, uh, semaphore uses it when there are one or more synchronization targets. Uh, anyway, it says to call LVGL function from other threads or tasks, you should run on the very same semaphore. Uh, and there's nothing special about the last. It's printing hello world on the screen by making a label from the create demo application function. Uh, let's see how it looks like. Uh, here you are. Uh, there is nothing other than the hello world. Uh, from now on, let's find out how I drew the UI. Uh, the source code of this project can be downloaded via the link below. Uh, first, unlike the Arduino source code, if the function you want to call is below where it's called, you must first define the function at the top. 
If you're not familiar with the C language, you may feel uncomfortable. Uh, if you define them all first, you can call them from anywhere. Uh, here is the LV array of function instead of the create demo application function. And the LV update status label function is to update the status label on the top left of the screen. You can see a couple of static variables are added. Uh, the emitter is the right meter widget. The emitter label is the center label widget of the right meter to show the current value of the right meter. Uh, finally, there is an integer type variable to store the delay time selected by the user. Uh, we are going to LV rail. Uh, for your information, I have prepared a UI node that represents UI structure on the right side of the screen. I hope it helps you understand. The start of the UI already starts by bringing a reference to the screen. Uh, the SCR is a top UI object. Uh, you can add what you need from here. First, there is something you need at the top of the screen. It's top bar. Uh, there are two LV objects here, a label widget and drop-down list widget. In this label widget, you can check the BRE connection status later. The drop-down list widget on the right shows options for selecting the shuttle time delay from users. Uh, I added five options. You can add or reduce more options here. Uh, place the drop-down list to the right and register the event handler. This function will be called whenever the item is selected. Uh, next, uh, add a button at the bottom of the screen. Uh, UI widgets have a default theme set, so when you make a button, the button has a rounded corner. Uh, instead of that, I'd like to make a flat button without any rounded one. This is why the button style was defined first. Uh, all stars must be initialized and started first. Uh, the corner value has been set to zero, so it makes the flat button. Uh, also, I set a button color. When it's pressed, it has a red color for not only background but the border. Uh, otherwise, it always has a gray color. A label is required to insert the text shot into the button. I will also create a style to change the color of the, this text. Uh, the font color is white and the opacity is 50. Uh, create a button as a child of the SCR. Uh, register the event handler called the button event handler that will occur when the button has an event. Uh, size the button and place it from the center below the screen to the upside 80 pixel on the Y axis. Uh, this time, create a label widget as the child of the button. If there is no positioning, the center position is the default so it didn't set separately. Set it to the label style you created earlier. Uh, then set the text shot. Uh, I don't know why I didn't set the button style before starting this text label. You can set it before the text label. Uh, let's add a right meter. Uh, the size of the, this widget is 160 pixel by 160 pixel and place it in the 40 pixel below from the center. Let's also make a label to display the value of this right meter. The default text is timer. Uh, set the animator to use on the right meter. Initialization is necessary as always. Uh, specifies which LV object this animator is associated with. Uh, it also specifies the animator callback function that will be called as the animator progresses. Uh, this animator has a value from 0 to 100 and it takes 400 milliseconds to move back to the first value. Uh, for animations that require repetition, set repeat count. Uh, let's see the newly defined functions. The LV update status label function updates the label with the message on the parameter. Uh, the next is drop down list event handler. It's a handling when the event is value changed. Uh, with the index of the selected item, you can know which item the user has selected. Uh, for example, the zero item is none, so the user set time is specified as zero. The first item is three seconds, so the user set time is three thousand. As the RV animator used a millisecond unit, uh, I adjusted it in advance. Uh, when an item is selected, the screen has to show which item is selected. So this part is for displaying the currently selected item in the error meter label. Uh, also, a few items have a different length, 
so it already positions the label in the center after updating the text. Uh, next is the button handler. We deal with only two events here, pressed and released. The pressed event continues to occur when the button is still pressed. Uh, the release event occurs when I took my finger off the button. Uh, there are many other events available. You can add them as needed. Uh, I create a function called shot trigger. It's designed to take different actions depending on the time user chooses. The body part of the, this function is not yet completed. The next video will be complete this part. If the user choice is not a zero delay, move on to the start timer function. It's very simple, just running the animator for as many seconds as the user's choice. Uh, the animation callback function is called continuously while the animator is running. The most important thing to do here is to change the value of the right meter. Set the current level value of the right meter with the value entered by the parameter. The following task is to display text to indicate what value the right meter has. Uh, we know the time that the user chooses. Uh, we also know that this animator has a value range of 0 to 100. Uh, so, simple calculation can give you the time remaining. Uh, only express the obtained value to the second decimal place and put it in the character buffer. Lastly, put it in the right meter label. I added a center line at the end so that the text is already centered. Uh, we've looked at all parts of the UI which is using LVGL. If you have any questions, please comment at the bottom of the, this video. Let's see how it actually works on the device. Oh, there's one missing part. The Y axis of the touch is reversed. Uh, I think I have to remove the invert Y coordinate value on the touch controller because the layout of my display is currently the inverted portrait mode. So let's go back to the idea of many config. Uh, go to the LVGL touch controller and touch panel configuration. Uh, in my case, I had to remove the invert Y coordinate value here. That's it. Let's see how it goes again. Finally, here you are. After tapping on the drop down list, you can see the pre registered items well. If you select one of the items, you can see that the right meter label changed to the selected delay time properly. Select the time and press the shot button to see the remaining time with the animation effect. It works great. If there is no delay time, you can see the shot button is clicked continuously without animation. This is all for today's video. The video got longer than I thought. Uh, in the next video, we will add the BLE HID function in the part we worked on today. Thanks for watching. See you soon.